Hey, good afternoon, Manchester, uh, uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. What the hell am I? <laughs> <laughs> and no, I'm not I'm, even smoking. Are you in space? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an alien from outer space. There you go. <laughs> this is an answer, right? Yeah, I, I thought, forgive you, I have had so many exciting things going on in my life that it's, now i got to refocus back, you know yes. what I mean? i got yes. my Facebook show, and then I just booked out in Brookline, New Hampshire, a, uh, uh, an entertainment center. I'm going to be doing one of the biggest events, Mary, I nice. ever, ever had. Yeah, I know where that okay. is. Okay, yeah. and I'm going to be looking for vendors and readers. I will be giving you more and more info as we go on. Um, and the week on Christmas, December 25th, we're going to be doing our show on Monday the 23rd. At the same time, so are you prepared to be a co-host again? Okay, I what? got to. You know, Don't we're close that week. No, well, not not. not uh, I'm being. She, she, uh, I guess probably from Tuesday on. But check out. There's up no shows. Up. Am I right? No, I'm going in Monday the twenty third. Christmas week. Christmas yeah. week. It's closed. Yeah. It's yeah. not even open. No, yet. no. I'm going in on Monday the twenty third. Oh, you. Go, oh, I know what you're going to do. Yeah, we're oh, doing okay. a pre event <laughs> Okay. So they can show. Uh, I feel like such a gay girl today. I know. I know look at Next mm -hmm. week, if you want to come on, okay. not this week, but the following week, the week before Christmas, I am having anybody who wants to come on for Christmas, because that will play that for two weeks for us. Mm -hmm. Anybody wants to come on. Hey, are you sitting on top of the world? I am now. Got my car registered and, <laughs> and inspected. <laughs> I'm sitting on top of the world, oh having a ball, feeling ten feet tall. No, my am a space get out today. I have with me the Honorable George. I want to know then Cooper. No. It's Lambert. 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 Why am I saying right? Cooper for? Yeah. But I remember your name and his beautiful Ned. George is going to have to have a shotgun in my hand because she's a hot-looking young lady. Okay? Yes, she is. And she blushes very easily. Yes, she does. And I just found out <laughs> she's a student in tarot cards. Am I correct? Yeah, Please just a little. Please a little closer. But I also want to teach you to fire reader. Is that what they call it? Fire yeah, reader? I'm a fire, fire performer. You know what? Ooh. Fire performer. A fire performer. Doesn't that hurt? Uh, only if you do oh. it wrong. Oh, well, yeah, that, that wakes you <laughs> up, Benson. How did you get involved in that? Um, when I was in the fifth grade, I saw a sideshow TV show, and I saw people do sword swallowing, um, and I wanted to do it. So I grabbed some scissors, and I just, like, put them down my throat. And so <sighs> the school that I was at at the time didn't like that, and I ended up getting in trouble. And then Not you. No, no. <laughs> then a few years later, I was I met the right people at um, a libertarian convention called Porkfest, and then I got invited to an event, and I learned and picked up from there. Yeah. Now do you have to. Call, I, I know they're trade secrets, so I'm not, I'm not going to divulge into that. Okay. But there, there are certain ways you have to do this, right? Mm -hmm. Do you approve of this, Dad? You know, I didn't originally, mm -hmm. but um, she said she wanted to do it, and I said no, no way. And then she went out and she did all of the research. She put together a notebook having to do with the training, the safety, you know, the whole, basically it was about 20 pages long about what one needed to know. So she'd actually gone and proven she had done the homework, she'd handwritten it in a notebook. And I'm like, okay, she's made some dedication to understanding it. Yeah. Um, so I said, let's go to one class. And we went to one class, and the instructors were really good, and, you know, they took a great deal of caution. And so we said, okay, let's give this a try. Did you do it too? No. He just learned how to be my safety. So now he, in case... I can put out the fires in case anything goes wrong. Yeah, we're Because okay. you never do this without having uh, oh, a, a safety partner right That's, there. Now, do you walk on coves too? I don't. I, I am going to be learning how to walk on fire in the cold here. Really? Because that's a real, actually, it's a very spiritual walk. <laughs> okay. Don't let, you, you know, I have one lady can be watching this show, and I had this one lady that said, but that's the devil's work. I, what if you don't believe in the devil? She said, then you're going to hell. I said, hell, I'm already there, you know. <laughs> now, aren't we? <laughs> you know. And then I had a, another lady, oh, Mary, 
I, yeah. I just let you know I'm going to hell. And you probably are too because you're my friend. Oh. There's no, uh, she has no, uh, she only has space open for the Holy Spirit. I said, well, why isn't the Holy Spirit in your heart and now? That's it's right. Now. It has to be there. Yeah, it it doesn't matter there. who you are, what creation you are. It doesn't matter who you are. It, what cause is inside your heart, who you yeah. are. Yeah. You know. And you, you know the thing is, like, do you find, Emily, I got it right again. Oh, my God. I haven't smoked anything either. Wow. And I don't mean cigarettes. You know that, right? Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> George, what do you think about legalizing marijuana? I'm 100% in favor. All right. Don't you think the old-fashioned <coughs> one every uh, representative of our state, state now or two that they need to shape up and... Um, you know, they are being cautious. And I oh. respect their being cautious. What they want to see, you know, what the migration is. They've actually expanded the medical marijuana um, exceptions list to be quite large. I will tell you that, you know, um, not to talk about, you know, my medical yeah. uh, bits a lot, but um, I was allergic to one of the medications I was on. I had a really bad reaction, and the doctor said, Hi, have you ever thought about medical cannabis? And I'm like, No. And she said, I think you should. Do you mind if I call your primary care physician to discuss it? And I'm like, fine. And he calls me in the next day and he said, have you ever thought about medical cannabis? Your other doctor thinks you'd be a perfect candidate. And so doctors are talking about it. Not Hitchcock. Right, what's that? Not, not Hitchcock. Um, hmm. But I, it, I thought it was you know, quite funny that it used to be a topic <laughs> no one would discuss. Oh, yeah. And now doctors are discussing yeah. it openly with their patients and saying this is the procedure, you know, um, you can, if you want to, you can go and fill out the paperwork and get a, an exemption. Um, and, you know, there's some negative side effects to that having to do with uh, being red flagged and gun permit lists and things. And, you know, I'm a Republican who carries. So, you know, I don't want to get rid of my ability to carry, uh, concealed carry. In the state. Mean, but yet you can be a drunken carrier. You can drive down the street. Two sheets to the wind, you know, and carry a gun and say, I'm going to shoot you today, you know what I mean? But yet when you, when you are smoking marijuana, I, I feel people like, I never hide the fact that I do it. it I'd be a hypocrite. You know, and what I find really funny is I've been around people who smoke marijuana um, for a long time. And the only thing I've ever seen them attack is a bag of, bag of Doritos. <laughs> oh my God, those are so good. I don't even like pizza, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> and my friend and I, one time, we had been smoking a homemade cigarette, as they call it. He, he ordered an extra large pizza. Uh -huh. I never eat so much pizza in my <laughs> life, and I haven't said. I, I, I should not recommend you because you would be allergic to it. See, I feel like the idea of legalizing marijuana is a great idea. Like, I love the idea of it, but the only problem is I think the government's going to put in too many rules, and it's really not going to be fun anymore. Like, that's kind of what the well, big idea is. Well, that's the whole thing about it being illegal now, seriously, is that, you know, you got to hide behind a tree. But yet, I think, you, know what, you can't have three quarters of an ounce. Is that, how much, is that how much you can have? Yeah. Okay. And then it's decriminalized. Uh -huh. You pay a fine. What are you going to do? Take a pair of scales? The, doc the, oh. <laughs> the, do the doctor told me the fine was 50 bucks. Yeah. But when, if you get a, uh, with a medical permit, you're okay. Okay. You can literally walk down the street with it. Really? As long as you have that medical card. Yeah. Wow. You're legal. You can walk down the street smoking it or yep. just having it? You can smoke it down the street because as long as you have that medical card, mm -hmm. you're safe. If I'm wrong, folks, give me a call and tell us, right? Yep. You know? But I think but you can. We're never wrong because we're, we're, we're experts. Six four you know, zero three zero nine one. The fact is that, um, you know, from my stance as a conservative Republican, mm -hmm. um, one would never know that. What? That I'm a conservative Republican? Right. I'm proud That's to be. That's probably true. I, I'm proud to be. Yeah. And the only thing I had to do was. Because of my political views, I was losing business as far as people coming in for me. And they were judging me for my 
political belief and not one I can do spiritually. Uh -huh. I had my former co-host informed some people that I know that I work with black magic. Mm -hmm. And, that, you know, and the thing is, black magic is only negative energy. There's no color, and it's all how you want to work with it. Mm -hmm. So, like, you're a very gifted young lady. Oh, yeah. Okay. You you know when your dad's going to be upset, or you know when your mom's upset. By the way, congratulations to your wife on her new job. Thank you. She's going to do very well. Because she's a no-nonsense worker, too. Yeah. And she also knows how to put you in your place. Yes, she does. <laughs> and she knows how to put you in your place. <laughs> and she does it with a smile. Yes. <laughs> That's what you really know. She's upset, uh -huh. you know. And, and she yeah, smiles a lot. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> but your your daughter got married. Your the daughter that met here. Uh, she is. In, uh, she's in the process of getting engaged. Um, she's trying to convince him. Oh. She's waiting for the ring. Like she's already signing her name. She's pretty cow. Tell her to make her boyfriend sleep <laughs> on the couch if he doesn't give her the diamond. That's why you should tell all my boyfriends, but they never got a diamond either. You know, but well, that's okay. But one of the things I'm also looking at you, George, are you going to run back into a state rep? Uh, You're going to win. I'm going to run. I'm going to run for something. I want you to run against Donna Susie. Me too. I am so tired. Um, this usually is not a political show. We got away from all that, but just some things I have to address, and I have the right to against my show, you know. <laughs> but. We had been held back by so much on the legislature, even when the Republican, we had been. Now, we have to take one step forward and make people realize, hey, we are in New Hampshire, and we are coming up to the generation that we want to come up to. We're going to bring it up. Because we're like 20 years behind times. Oh, yeah. I can remember when I came back from, from college in California. <coughs> Did I say that right, college? Okay. Yeah. From California, you know. And I looked and I said, oh my God, we're puritanic. Uh-huh. Everything that I did out there, they're starting to do here, you know. Wake up, people. Enjoy each other. Stop bad-mouthing each other. And I, I, I used to be pretty good, but I'm learning not to be now. People are not going to change. Mm-hmm. We can change. Well, actually, I think they do. Um, but it's a generational change that is hard to notice. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't mind me going off on a rant for a second. No. When well, I'm used to that with you, so you're a well, politician. So. <laughs> when I was young, okay, we had gotten past a lot of the um, racial politics. I, I'm not saying it was gone, but it was very, very different. Okay. Yeah. In Is other words, mm -hmm. it was not the racial. Oh. It was not the racial politics um, of 50 years ago. Uh, we did not have separated lines and buses, right? But when I was young and in high school, if you were, if, if you were gay, if you were transgender, whatever, you were in big trouble, right? And today we have an adjustment. It's a generation away, which is it's not necessarily fully accepted, but it's recognized as a lifestyle and choice for some you don't have to like it but it's recognized as being something that can be openly discussed rather than is really risky and then i think a generation from now it'll be mostly a non-issue yeah. because we have same-sex marriage and one of my biggest concerns is be who you want to be yeah when you're gay straight transgender whatever my one from the hallelujah you know or whatever <laughs> But don't force it. That, that the problem is you're forcing too much of it on people. Sure. And it's not the government's business right. to actually tell you. You know, and I don't like it being forced on the younger generation kids at school. Mm -hmm. I, I really have a problem with that because I think people have to learn by themselves. We all know. I knew I was different from the age of eight years old. You know, whether I'm spiritual, whether I was, what I liked and all that. But I think, but I, but as far as being forced, I, I used to hide in the showers because, like you just said, George, back in the fifties and sixties, it was not acceptable, mm -hmm. and you could get beaten up very easily for it. You know? Oh yeah. By the way, folks, we're going to Dow show, and are you ready to show your video? Yeah. I can't hear you. 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 I can't get louder. That's what I want you to do. <laughs> are you ready to show your video? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. There you go. And you're going to explain what's going on? 
Okay. She'll probably, ha it's it's short, so she'll probably have to play it a couple times to explain what's going on because there's a lot of detail. Not her talk, Father. It's uh, exciting, though. Yeah, it's only 30 seconds. Oh, okay, well, so. we'll just repeat it twice. Whenever you're ready. Okay, what are you doing now? So, right there, I was transferring fuels. I could feel the burn. Could you? Maybe? I know. I could feel oh. the heat. <laughs> yeah. You enjoy doing it? I love it so much. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do, like, ever. Um, I've just never felt anything, like, fuel my heart like that and right. just make me so happy. So uh, how, do you still practice in that quite often? Or? Um, not recently because it's been getting, like, colder, and I just I haven't been feeling it recently. But I know if I get back into it, then I will. You're going to be a great, your job is an entertainer, like, so you're an old soul. Mm -hmm. And back in your past life, you were actually a circus entertainer. You actually did the trapeze and the tight walk. You love it. You find uh, circus intriguing? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> my, um, we've actually, funny thing is, is my family, like, we've never gone to the circus. And I wanted to go once. And my uncle, he was just like, if we take you to the circus, you probably won't come home. <laughs> and he was right, right? Probably. You know? She would have left with the circus. So you have, one of the things about you, you're, you're always going to have that restless spirit. And you, I don't see you going right, I do see you taking a break from cut before going to college. Mm -hmm. And I do, see, but it's going to get to you, prove me wrong, okay? But your education, you will get back into But you're going to have to need to get rid of that rest of spirit, whether it takes run after college for five years, or whether it takes two years, or whatever. You're going to have to get rid of that restless spirit. And because if you were born with... Was she a restless child growing up? I would have to say yes. I'm sorry? Yes. Okay. And I don't want to ever see you settle down like that. Because if you try... Now, how do you try to? The more restless you're going to get, and the more agitated you're going to get. Mm -hmm. And one thing I can also say about you, I don't see you being involved in drugs. Because that would take you up in your, what you want to do. I actually see you owning some property with a lot of different animals on it. I love animals so much, so that's so exciting. What if I told you I saw you owning a, 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 an elephant? Really? Yeah. And I don't mean, folks, it's going to be right away. I don't know if George has a big enough house to bring an elephant in. I don't. Because you'd have to build a bigger room. Yeah. Because she will not let the cat in. Or a bigger barn. Animal, or a bigger barn because she will not allow the animal. But I don't see you living in a, in a New Hampshire area for a long period of time. Yeah, I don't either. Um, and you're going to, uh, but the one thing I want you to understand this is that your parents are always going to be supportive. They may not always agree with what you're going to do, mm -hmm. but they'll always be supportive of you. you know, and, and whoever you find better understand that you have that restless spirit <laughs> and that you're going to be. And never change. Always be who you are. Okay? No matter what you do with the wife, I happen to know that your mom and dad are going to be very proud of you. Mm -hmm. okay. I know that too. They're already like really proud of me. No I see a tattoo right here. Right here? Yeah. Like... Oh, I was gonna say right now. <laughs> no, no, no. I <laughs> visualize. Like, I visualize a tattoo right here for you eventually. Oh, nice. Don't let her have it yet, Dad. She's too young. I would agree. I'm sorry. I would agree. Uh -huh. Boy, you're a stubborn lady, aren't you? Yeah. So you get that from both parents, and you also get that from your past life. You actually have always been a very restless person. You've always done a lot. You've been. You know how they come. Remember the old. Joe, 
the old gypsy tours they used to have. You see them in the Facebook, you know, on the movies and all that. You had these gypsy that's, wagons. I, that's how I see her. Do you? That's I really I do. Her, yeah. I see her. Oh, incoming call. Okay. Where are we here? Yeah, Hi there. No one's in the corner. Hi, this is Jim in Manchester. I just have a couple of questions for you, you and the panel. Okay. Go for it. Um, I wanted to know um, what is the status of the circus in, in, in America today, and how and how many and in how many states is marijuana already illegal? I, I, and what is the status for the circus? In, uh, you gotta look it up. You know? I'm gonna look it up. Okay, I think in the marijuana, there's no, twelve I, or fourteen. I think. Don't count on it, but I think there's twelve states right now that's legal. Can you look it up for me, Scott? I'm not gonna. I'm not sure okay, about that. Okay, we're looking it up. How do you feel about legalizing it? Medical marijuana is legal in 33 states. Oh, 33 yeah. states. All That's right. medical. Last time yeah. I know it was That's in 12 medical. or 14. When I know in Massachusetts, Maine, and Vermont, it's mm -hmm. legalized. You know. And in I, I believe in... There's 12? Uh, I'm looking up the list for fully legal versus right, medicinal. Right. No, it's, uh, this is George that's looking it up. But I also am looking up, too, as well, is that... Uh, but they, I agree that if they sell it legally, that they would get an eight percent tax on whatever they sell, and that would help uh, the education, or it would also help for Medicaid. Is that what they call it, Medicaid? Yep. For the medical bills and stuff like oh, that. Thanks, guys. I'm yeah. Enjoying the show. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Have fun. Yep. Watch the show, and you'll get okay. the rest of the answers. Bye -bye. Thank you. Any more questions? Give us a call. Okay. Bye, Mary. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. -bye. You know, that was a great question yeah. because people should know. I mean, yeah. they sh it, it used to be you couldn't even ask that question in public. And yeah. now we're answering it on television. Years ago, I would have been kicked off the air. Yeah. I mean, when I was a selectman, I went up uh, holding signs for um, decriminaliza decriminalization of marijuana. And I was absolutely sure that was the end of my political career. Uh, and this is a number of years ago, right? Because it was really risky. And here I am handing out brochures uh, on, you know, decriminalization <laughs> of marijuana to um, uh, members of the House and members of the Senate. And, like, I thought, wow, I'm in so much trouble. But it was right at that cusp, sort of as it was shifting from you can't talk about this to it's time to talk about this. And the majority of America, you know, was right on the edge. You know, what, I mean, that's like I was going to run for like state rep, but I said no because it was interfering with my own spiritual beliefs and my own spiritual growing. And you know what? I will support anybody that will support the, the, the right to have our, our, our decision on the marijuana. I really will. And obviously, you have to be very careful who you buy it from, what you buy, and stuff like that. Because, you know, it's like every other drug you buy. People are going to mistreat, people are going to treat it, you never know what they're going to put in it. Mm -hmm. One time, I, I smoked on Jay many, many years ago, and they had put Quaaludes in it. And I was like, I was paralyzed for like five hours. That was the most Heroin experience I ever had gone through. My my youngest stepson, they put PCP in it. Oh my god! You, well, and if you, you when you go to a medical dispensary, yeah. you know what you're getting. Yeah, you yeah. know, you know what the true. chain of you know what the chain of custody is. You know what the source of origin is. You know it hasn't been tampered with. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of the things that you know makes it really more safe than in Massachusetts and Canada, Vermont. Is you walk into a place of business and you know, there's no messing around where, you know, let's be honest, when I was in high school, you know, somebody walks in with a bag of something and you don't know where it's been and it's, you know, this little ground up powder and who knows what they put in it. I mean, it could be. That's what I'm saying. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and then and one other thing is, you know what the real sad part is Jewish with people and Mary and Emily is that they do nothing when people use inhale the paint. Or inhale the oh yeah, glue. that's very or dangerous. That, or that's, I don't understand why they have to really do all this. And when they're inhaling, uh, some people are in inhaling the cooking oil. Cooking oil. Cooking oil. Yeah. 
I mean, I think that already. And they're doing, gross. you know what else they're doing? They're mixing Clorox. Yeah. That's a new one now that's out. Mixing Clorox and different, so they can smell it. That's oh the, my God. Yeah. Folks, you know, you know, if you can't handle reality, fight back. If you can't handle the way the government is taking care of us, fight back. I can give anybody who wants to some suggestions, no matter what side they're on. You know, I'll help a Republican or a Me Democrat too. fix issues that are fundamental to personal freedom, right? Because Doesn't the government, which because party you're on. every Doesn't time the matter. government takes um, personal freedom away from anyone, it hurts everyone. Yeah. We are now going to do a reading on the nice shy looking man. She's not so shy as she was, trust me, folks. Am I right, George? Absolutely. Okay. She always will have a, she'll make a good attorney. <laughs> Beverly. Okay, shuffle those up. It's saying hi. Hi. Kathleen Russell, Nikki Stretch from Washington, D.C., okay. uh, Washington State. Hey, Linda Caitlin, Rocha said to, hello. Okay. Caitlin, I want you to, uh, thanks for me and come on my show. Yes. Oh, right. Facebook video. Yeah. That's what I'm doing right now. Nice. I also have my own show in my office, too. On, on yeah, Facebook. I like that. You That's do? Fun. I that actually do a bunch of Zoom, uh, like uh, Zoom groups. Um, Tell me how to do that. Tell me how. Go to zoom.us, and you can um, have a conference room with video. You can have um, up to uh, a small group or uh, up to 100 people. You can record it. You can return it, turn it into a webcast, but you, they don't. They all don't have to be in the same place. I've heard of that one. And it's wonderful because what it does, got a picture of people, but whoever's talking, yeah. their picture comes up to the front. So even when you have a large number of people, they can all participate. Yeah. I was listening to a discussion with um, YouTubers because of what they call the YouTube apocalypse that's going to happen today, um, where they're going to take channels off of YouTube they don't like. Arbitrarily, if they don't like your channel, yep. it's going away. And so I was on the phone with YouTube content producers. And if you add up their audiences together in summation, their audience subscriptions exceeded 5 million. This is a group of 30 people. And they're all talking about, you know, how it uh, impacts, you know, free journalism where, you know, YouTube is a journalistic platform. I'm I'm going to I did a trial run on YouTube the other day, and I'm, I love you know I like that I'm expanding. Yeah. Okay. They told me no nudity. I was disappointed in that. You know, because I'm a nudist person. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, nudist from the shoulders up is fine. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? Okay, I would like you to take out three cards without looking at them. Okay, from like any, one yeah, from each. Any, any, anywhere you want. Okay. Hey, you all on Facebook with me. Give us a call. Yeah. There you go. 603. What the hell is that? 640 Yeah. Give us okay. a call. Let us know right now. You need one of those. Anyone you want. Okay. Breakthrough. There's a lot of things in your life that you're going to have a big breakthrough. In other words, all the steel that you've gone through. See, you, you, you are a person who is going to be breaking through, like with a fire eating, um, with your opinionated mind. Don't ever lose that, please. And I know you enjoy debating with your father. And he, he, uh, you let him think he wins, you know. But a, a breakthrough is like, you know, doing that. You're going to, you're going to be doing a lot of things. When you're like, there's a lot of big changes coming around in your life if you want to let them happen, okay? Don't be afraid to allow you, yourself to be courage, and, you know? Don't let people hold you back because there's going to be a lot of jealousy. Breakthrough. Uh, Creole, a big breakthrough. Financial, for the first, next 10 years you'll be having some struggles, but nothing major, major. Mm -hmm. But in order for you to grow, you're going to need that financial struggle. You know that your home, I don't care if you're 50 years old, well, you will always have a home with your mom and dad, okay? And that, which is a very comforting thing, I think, don't you? And also, you're gonna meet a lot of weird people. I oh, love weird people, it's great. But you know what, what is weird 
to us, it's comfortable for them. Like what's weird, what I do, is people think it's weird too, okay? But as long as you're comfortable with what you're doing, there's no, you will never conform to society. You agree with that? Absolutely. Okay. I don't think you want to, would you? No. You don't conform. I, absolutely not. I conform to a, a strict set of values mm -hmm. that are, you know, I will respect you if I disagree with you. I will treat you with dignity and respect as long as you treat others with dignity and respect. And I will come to the defense of anyone who is being oppressed for any reason, even if I disagree with the reason they're being um, attacked. Right. Or if, if I, even if I don't like the thing that they're saying, I will defend their ability to say it. And, and, what right, I, yeah. and what I find so frustrating about our political culture right now <laughs> is we don't want to talk about that. Like if somebody's on the other yeah. side, okay, then let's just dismiss them. And that's wrong because there's good ideas everywhere. I mean, Bernie Sanders has some good ideas. Not that I would elect him for president, no. but, you know, th there's some... There's some real meat and potatoes in his in his thinking. Not a call for you. One more cut. This week. One thing about you is that you, you're strong in what you believe, and don't ever let someone back you down. If your father or mom or anybody in your friends see you backing away from it, they're gonna get on your case right there. It's no tomorrow because you were never taught to back down. If, you just, if you're in the wrong, you'll be the first one to apologize. But they did now what they did well, better be able to prove that you were wrong. Because, like your dad just said, we don't always have to agree with each other. But uh, like, the sad part, when I have, Mary and I are on different political views, but we're still very best friends. Okay. You know what I did for her on Thanksgiving? She came to my house, and I thought it was pretty genuine. I gave her what, a half, uh, three fourths of a tablespoon of mashed potato. I gave her a teaspoon of stuffing. And I gave her one small piece of turkey and a little bit of cranberry sauce. And a little bit of gravy. And a little bit of gravy. I thought it was pretty nice of me. Well, as long as she was happy with it, that's that great. I would have asked for slightly more than a little me piece, too. but you know. Wow. Me too. <laughs> yeah, what I, what I would want you, is a little. We, you know, we said that. Well, you know, I know a lot. Me too. You know. What did he do that to you? <laughs> Although, if you put that in some bread, yeah. that is the most amazing that, sandwich. I gave her oh half my. a slice of bread. Uh huh. Well, that's okay. She could fold it over. Yeah. And, but do you know what I mean yeah. about the day after Thanksgiving yeah. sandwich? Sandwich. I don't want another turkey. And, you, and put no, cranberry all, sauce you, on it. Actually, oh. when she came home, home and. She, we end up having her take some home too. Yeah. And if they, you know, like you Mary said, it. if you could, I'll be having a cookout when I do. I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. But if people leave my house or my son's house, and they're hungry, that's their problem, not mine. Right. Because we always make sure we have. So and that, that's you go to Mary's house too. You know. There's so much yeah. food. There's enough for Nami. Yep. When you leave, well, there's well, so much. Well, my son, there I, I, where you watched, I gave him a 25 pound turkey. Oh, that turkey was so good. Twenty-five pounds is a too. lot of turkey. That's a whole. Uh, that, I don't want to see another a turkey for a long. But time. my cat loved that. I bet they did. Thank you. Oh, you know, I I had to go out and buy me a new roasting oven just to cook it all. Boy, well, did it cook good. But I don't because I won't use gas. I'm terrified of gas. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, we can be almost down and out, searching a dollar bill or whatever. We've done it. But you know what? You can also make everything you have. You can appreciate what you have. Mm -hmm. Don't you appreciate it? Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and yeah, don't you appreciate your, your child being spoiled? Oh, well, I don't think my children are spoiled. I think they are taught to be independent. And um, they actually have to earn things. They have to earn rights. And they have oh, to earn okay. privileges. And are you spoiled? I am independent. But if I, like, ask for something and I ask enough, and make good reason. No, okay. Then I get it. <laughs> she wanted a turtle. Can I tell you the? Can, yeah. I tell, can I tell the turtle story? Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell the turtle story? So when I was eight years old, I wanted a turtle. It was the only thing on my mind. I was like, I need a turtle. So I was like, you know what? Okay. So I had recently learned how to use Google Slides in computer class. 
So I took and I made a PowerPoint presentation on why I needed a turtle, did all the research for it again, and then I like streamed it to my TV. And when my parents got home and I was like, can you sit down, like take a seat? And I, I presented it and I had my sister over there like clicking the slides for me. <laughs> Did you get the turtle? Yes, she had the turtle. He was on I, I had friends who were actually there um, when this happened who were so blown away that someone her age like was sitting there making a PowerPoint pitch like she was pitching a corporate executive. Right. My brother-in-law, when I was, I think I was about 10 years old, uh, we got a uh, orange marker for the turtle, and I lived in the country way back then. then. 10 years later, we were still there, and that turtle was still around there with that marker still on it. Wow. You know? So, and I didn't have it. Folks, you know, I don't understand why people have to just chill for the hell of it, the animals. And then they show pictures of it on Facebook. I hate that. Yeah. I hate it. I, won't, I refuse to watch it. I always believe this. It isn't the animals that are wild. It's the people. Animals don't go up and kill you just for the heck of it. People do. And I'm not naming any nationality. I'm not naming any race. I'm not naming... I'm just saying people. Yep. Okay? And it's so sad that we have to allow... All this garbage to destroy. It. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a gun. It doesn't have to be, it can be the drug, it can be whatever, you know, and a lot of them can destroy themselves. But anyway, we're going to get back to this one. Sorrel. Okay. You're a very sensitive person, aren't you? Outwardly, you try to be this, this tough young lady. Yeah. But your heart bleeds for everybody. That's where the sorrel comes in. And you can mope around if you don't get your own way. You know, <laughs> oh. That's really true. But I think you should, your parents have <laughs> know how to ignore it. Huh? Yeah. By the way, did your mother on your, on your side, Joyce, pass? Yes, she did. Okay. She knew your daughter? Um, I don't think she met me. She didn't meet okay, her. Okay, well, she knows you. She told me to stop feeling sorry for yourself. <laughs> I feel like that's something she would say based on the stories I've heard. You told me that you're a beautiful, you're actually very much like her in many ways. Am I? Mm -hmm. Okay. She said, don't try to be domesticated, you'll never be domesticated. You better earn, you better get somebody who's married and got a lot of money to do your housekeeping for you. Even though you may keep your house at home, but on your own, I don't know how it, I'll throw it over here, <laughs> I'll throw it over there. Because you're not, your mind is always, and I'm not, don't take that as an insult, please. Mm. But because your mind is always going, going, going. And sometimes your parents' rules can be overbearing, huh? My parents what? Your parents' rules and regulations sometimes you find can be overbearing. But you know how to get your way around that. Sometimes. If I can be clever enough. If I can out clever them, <laughs> they're too they're too They're okay. Their rules are really clever, but you have to be able to. Our like, rules are clever. I think our rules are incredibly straightforward. Yeah, they're cl like they're cleverly made. Mm -hmm. They're easy rules. It makes you think, though, huh? Yeah, and you have to like get around it. It's like a, it's like a. That's what will make you a good politician. <laughs> but I don't see you being a politician. Do you want to be? I I, do, I used to. I was like, I'm going to run for rep. That's about as far as I'm going to go. I would be very surprised because you're too much of a free spirit right now. Maybe 20 years from now or 30 years from now. Yeah. I know there are a lot of, I know that you have a lot of respect for your parents. But you all, but they also realize that they had to earn that respect from you. Respect is not, you know, that's like you earning them earning your respect. You have to earn their respect too. I'm a firm believer in that. You can love your children, but in order that like, they have to earn, or your parents, but they have to earn their respect. Mm -hmm. I had to earn my son's respect to my granddaughter. We have to learn how to. Do you agree with that? Yeah. You know. Yeah. You give respect to have respect. Right. It worked both yeah. ways. I I did at one of Mary's friends' uh, uh, a funeral service there or morning service. I could not believe her sister and how she just was so cruel to her own children. And then she wonders why they don't respect them. What's that? I don't know. Oh, I don't one. think it's me. Sounds like a Facebook call on your phone. Oh. Okay, that's probably. Probably want a reading or something? 
Yeah, I think it was your phone going yeah. off. Yeah. So yeah. I would like to say, uh, just because I don't hear it said in public enough, we need to separate people um, between who they are and what they do, right? Because, for example, I can love my daughter even if she does something wrong. There's this huge hmm, separation that people don't make. You may do something I dislike, but it doesn't mean that I dislike you. Right. Right? And if we create that separation in our communities and our discussion, then we can actually like people we disagree with. Well, uh, and like and it would make the city and the state and the nation and the world a better place if we just said, you know what, we can have different opinions. I'm going to love you anyway. Yeah. Well, that's like all the people who, because I don't agree with their political views, that I don't know what I'm talking about, or uh, don't Facebook me, and don't, uh, you know, then they're not your true friends. Mm -hmm. If you and I, I'm sure they would think that you and I may not agree on all the time. Uh, probably not. I mean, I know I'm sexy, you know, and I know I'm gorgeous, you know. And just ask me, and I'll tell you, right? I know. You know. I don't think there's ever been a day when you didn't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't believe in yourself, you don't believe that you're a winner, and you don't believe it, then you know what? You really aren't. You're really not until you prove to yourself, not to me. Not to her, not to you, not to anyone. Prove to yourself that you're a winner day by day. Keep on looking and moving forward. You know, and I'm a firm believer in that, you know. I don't believe in such a thing as a loser. Mm -hmm. Only if you align yourself to believe me. I, I believe I've lost everything I show you have too. Life has never, and Mary, we know, Mary, life has never been an easy, easy journey, has it? No, it hasn't. Would you want it any other way? No. I had to fight for everything I have. How about you? I want to give it on a civil uh, file. I have. Um, it has been an uphill challenge. I broke my neck when I was 18 years old. Wow. I fractured three cervical vertebrae. They told me if I was in one more accident, I would probably be paralyzed and dead. Uh, I'll tell you that getting that close to death when you are young is the most liberating experience you've ever had because everything else is uphill. Right, everything is a bonus. But you had to work for it. Oh yeah, and I've worked hard. Would you hard. change it? What's that? Would you change anything? Not a thing. No. You got to put your hand down. So I'm you sorry. Hand. I'll tell you, I was, um, um, I was in, uh, I was in downtown Manchester one day, and I ran into somebody who dislikes me, a lot, uh, who has blogged about me, who has YouTubed about me, who's written articles. Like they despise me. And I ran into them downtown. They didn't recognize me. And I'm like trying to be nice to them. I don't even know who they are. And I introduce myself. And this guy realizes who I am. And he's like, oh. and I'm, I'm like, you know, I love your stuff. I said, I don't agree with it. Okay. But I love the fact that you do it. Right. Because it creates that opportunity for discussion. And that's what we need in society is, you know, I don't necessarily agree with you. You don't just, you don't agree with me. But let's engage in, you know, a difference of opinion because yep. it is so healthy. Mary and I would come out of doing a show and then this guy there went away beat at Menahem. Hill. And he literally coming. He, we thought he was going to attack us. Yeah, twice he came twice. out to us. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and then another time I had my very good friend. <laughs> how many people? You know how they say Catholics don't believe in what we do, right? That that that. that <laughs> but I have a very dear friend, Mary Menem. The bishop. The bishop. Yep. Came on my show, mm -hmm. and we, we are the best of friends. Mm -hmm. And I tell him, <laughs> if I come down to that monastery, just to let you know, Father, I run around naked, so you better behave yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and he actually, I love this man. One of the most spiritual men you would ever, you would enjoy him too. He may be coming up. In, if he cuts up in the spring, I'll let you know. You can come Please? Up, so. well, he's, is he he one only of the speaks nice five different you languages. Want to meet? Uh -huh. Talking about somebody having a lot of strong spiritual beliefs, he left the monastery that he was in in the Dominican because of all the child manifestation stuff going on, completely with no money, okay? <laughs> he came here and got a job at a bookstore, rewriting a lot of, excuse me, and I did a reading on him. 
And, I, and he said, yeah, right, said General Holmes. And I, he, he uh, to asked me about three different gentlemen that were there. And then described that one was very sick, and the other one had some broken leg that's deformed, and the other one's in prison. And he, he just, I just opened up, you know. Then I said, oh, by the way, you're going to be teaching at Harvard within the next seven weeks. And right on that day, you got any talks there for seven years. And I love that when I do readings on people, <laughs> I like to get that confirmation back. Then I know I'm on the right track. I will never, ever tell anybody I'm 100%. Anybody that tells you that they're really and they're 100%, bye bye. Because you can't me. I'm not God. Even though I'm perfect. Aren't you, <laughs> aren't you perfect? Only as perfect as I woke up this morning and comparing myself to the way I am today. How about you? No. Oh, God, no. Would you want to be? I don't think there is a perfect. Well, right. mm -hmm. obvious, right. obviously you didn't hear what I just person. said, but... Oh, no. I just said on issues. Well. I agree with you. There's no perfect person Because on everybody has a different, like, perspective and what yeah. they want. You're right. In other words, I'm not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and all that stuff. Now, I don't think I want to be perfect. You no. Know, you know what? And I feel that I'm, I love what I do. But you know what? I learn from you. Yeah. I learn from you. Even though you're a young, as we say my dad, in, the, in the old, you're a young whippersnapper. <laughs> Remember that saying? You know, and, uh, you know, I learn from everybody. If you don't learn and you think you learned it all, you have learned nothing. My grandmother used to have this uh, little <laughs> sign on her refrigerator that said, you know, go out and take over the world while you still know everything. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Who, I, who made the homemade bread that passed? I feel like homemade hot rolls and homemade bread. Uh, I guess that would either have to be my mother or my <coughs> grandmother. And it's an old fashioned wood stove. <coughs> old fashioned wood stove would be my grandmother. Okay. And she made the most delicious. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll tell them. She made the most delicious apple pie. And blueberry? And blueberry. And she can make things out of nothing. Absolutely true. Because she, even though there were times when she had to struggle to get food or whatever, and she also wants me to tell you, no matter what you've done, or you, people think you've done wrong, she's still <coughs> proud of you, and she'll support whatever you do. Who plays the piano? His son. Yes. Your son? Yes. Oh, so you have a half brother? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And then, because I'm hearing, roll out the barrel, we'll have a barrel of fun. We got the blues on the run. You know, my son will probably call me and tell me not to sing. I know. Sing, Mike, he's singing. Yeah, my son will say, Dad, don't sing. <laughs> Here, would you like my keys just to give you some help? There you go. But, uh, <laughs> I was just joking. That's what there, I but... love. No, that's what I like about my show. I enjoy doing it. Uh -huh. I have a lot. Of, since I. Since I got rid of the political garbage on my part because it wasn't really pulling me back, I will always have what I believe in. I have a separate page for that. But my do you think my energy is a lot more yep. positive. <coughs> By the way, we got three ladies that spirits that hang around in that corner. Oh yeah, then every once in a while they'll come out. And they, I had some ladies that come on from that do the uh, paranormal, and that's one lady that she was on here, and that uh, she came on, and she was the only one. Her name was Tammy, I think, or, or, or what, I don't remember the name now. But she came on, that, that lady that was the only one that she would connect with, with the lady that was sitting on the TV show. But she also lets me know when she's very unhappy with people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because she almost like, you know, I can feel the energy. But she is very, she likes you. She knows you, actually. Oh. See, one of the things about spirit, they know us all. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if you, you know, um, you may not know them in their life, you might have known them in their past life, but they know us all. And, I want, and oh, by the way, Addie says hi to you. Hello, Addie. And she's thanking you for celebrating her holidays. Whatever that means, only you know. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> you still racing your car out of state? Well, not the tribe secret, I'm sorry, but okay. But I thought I, I was going to get my license back. But I think I'm afraid to drive today. Why? 
First of all, my eyesight isn't good enough. And uh, they make these things called glasses. I just had to get mine. Yeah. Um, but my, I have to. I my, have to my, have mine that read my computer screen. Yeah. Not my. To uh, <laughs> and sometimes my lack of con uh, concentration. Uh huh. I, well, and, I can see but that. But I'm very blessed. That, hey. <laughs> but I'm also very blessed. I have people like Mary and my daughter. If daughters are like my daughter-in-law, I have the most beautiful daughter and daughter-in-law knowing. Okay. She is. She's, She's always a beautiful girl. Me. Just like you're always going to be there for your dad. You may get angry at him. Don't tell me you don't. Make you what? may get angry at him. You may mutter under your breath, but yeah, that's okay. <coughs> Let me give me that card. Okay. I did forget you just to let you know. <coughs> Self-sabotaging. What do you think that means? I definitely hold myself back. And, like, I just, like don't do things that I should. Like homework? Like homework. That was what was coming to mind. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, yeah. I just really like... Stop hurting yourself. Okay. Okay, mentally. Okay. Because you're awesome. That's right. In every suicide, single way. I, I'm going to be very honest with you. Suicide is no answer. You know what I mean by that. You're not, you're not bringing an end to you. You're bring, what you're doing is you're also hurting other people that love you. You're very well loved. Oh, I can't take it anymore. I just going to kill you. I, you know what? I didn't go through that. I want this new medication. <laughs> and Scott can tell you, all I want to do is think about is harming myself. So I'm getting off it. You know, he puts up a lot. Right, Scott? Yeah, I'll, I'll just, well, I'll just kill myself and nobody will have to worry about it. And I'm better than that. You know, I'm getting ready. They tell me I have diabetes. You know what? I've thrown all that medication away, and I'm going to heal myself. Because we, can, you've done a lot of your own self healing. Okay. You, the one thing about you, you, one of the reasons why you don't like doing homework, is because you get bored very easily. Yeah. <laughs> you should be on the high honor roll. I could do that. Yeah. That's what all of her teachers said to me at parent teacher conferences. I'm going to give you a challenge. Day. Always down for a challenge. If you don't go and get on the high honor roll, I'm going to take your tarot card rights away from you. Oh. And I can do it. <laughs> Is that fair? Absolutely. A little encouragement here, a little encouragement there. And I will know. Is that a challenge? All right. Okay. All right. We've got a challenge on. There we go. Wait, high honors? At least A's. Okay. Okay, I'll... <laughs> <clears throat> One B. No. Okay. Yeah, that's lazy writers. Okay. If you can't perform the B higher than a B, I have no problem with that. But when I know you can, and trust me, I don't have to sit in your yard. I don't have to sit on your dad's lap and look cute. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't because I can sit in my house and know what's going on. That's what I love about the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and I will. Uh, there are times when I want it. I would want to <coughs> hurt someone, and I say, "Wait a minute! I just in the past," mm -hmm. and it came back to haunt me in the end, mm -hmm. because whatever we put out, we're going to get back tenfold. Mm -hmm. You know, like the other day. Oh, Mary, you want to have a <coughs> good laugh? Yes, yes. You know that people who live above me on the third floor. Yeah. Okay. Well, was it Monday we had that bad storm? This last Monday, right? on the Monday before, yeah. you know. And uh, so my daughter-in-law came over and she helped, we had to go, and then she helped and this other gentleman, they dug each other up. Then this guy came in with a, with a white car and he sat there, just wait for them to pull, instead of him getting out and helping shovel it out, he decided it was easier for him to sit in the car. And he was younger than the both of them. And I said, are you gonna, oh, I don't have my shovel with me. No, no, you're not, thank you. Okay, and wow, the next day Karma has a way of paying that, and that car got repoed. I <laughs> smile. Wow. <coughs> wow. So many Pick younger up. people, I'm telling yeah. you. You know, if we all help each other. Yeah. Where I live now, I, I have my, my friend Christina, she was next door. I, we talk to each other, but we don't really socialize, and I don't want to socialize with the people in my building. We know each other, we say hi to each other, and I'm happy that way, you know? Because know, people don't need to know my personal business, or like, and I tell you guys are the same way, right, George? That you know, people don't need to know your personal business. 
Say that again? People, unless you want them to know, don't need to know your personal business. <clears throat> well, I have to make the assumption based on my history. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, we all know about you. Right. I know you're a chatterbrain. Uh, well, that too. And a little um, lady in the night in the past. Well, you know. <laughs> um, you know, you know both my wife and my ex-girlfriend. So, um, no, come on, it's true. You know, we've been on the show together. Oh yeah. I mean, she and I were on the show together, both my wife and my girlfriend. So, like, it's a little crazy. Which uh, who? Mel. Okay. Mel and I were because oh. Mel and and we I had a meeting on it. And then um, it was I came on here. Um, right after Mel did some disparaging, said some disparaging things about me, my wife came on with my daughter and corrected some misinformation. I remember that. I was on here with you. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know, but I have to assume that everything I do, everything I say, every, you know, time I cross the street, that there's somebody with a camera ready to, you know, send that in. Um, so I don't believe I have a private life anymore. Once you get into the political world or in the TV world like I am, yep. I know it's a small local station, but I'm also on Facebook. Yeah. So I really have to be very careful what I say and how I do it because, mm -hmm. like you just said, one person could just disrupt it and it could be Like uh, this guy, uh, I have never had a police call on me before, but this last summer, the guy Nick, that was out front called the police on me. And the police come knocking on the door, they have three big. You, you got, uh, what's going on? I go, I don't know. What's going on? What I said was, excuse me, the troublemaker is going through, referring to myself because he was an idiot, but I'm calling to him. Next time I got the cops <laughs> knocking at my door, telling me that. I go, what are you talking about? And I got, then another lady was going to come in for a reading. She turned to tell me that I had grabbed her arm and I said, sir, I don't even like women, so why would I grab her arm? You know? And I showed him what I said on Facebook. So then go, I said, um, she said, well, you didn't tell me that you live alone. I said, I don't live alone. You know, my office is separated from my, the rest of my house, you know. And I said, for, I said she just wanted a free reading and didn't want to pay for it, you know. And I said, oh, my God. But, like, you and I, we're both open. We're, we're open to the public. So we have, I have nothing I've ever done that I'm ashamed of. Yeah. No. And you know what? As long as our family members, like your wife, as long as they all forget, that's all I care about. <laughs> my son and I, we've been through a lot together at one time when we going around, but we've always been close. You know, okay. And the one thing about you, Emily, is that when you, you are going to be, I don't see you settling down for a long, long time. Do you? Not really. Like, not like settling, settling. But I don't see you get married for a long time. Oh, yeah, no, me neither. If at all. You know what? I, I, I can picture her in a circus. Yeah. I can too. I can really. I can picture her in Bottom the circus. Bottom and Bailey present. But I can actually animal. picture her running the circus. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like as an administrator. Like yeah. Oh, she'll be both as animals. a animals. You can see that she loves animals. Yeah. She would be both the animal, the, uh, yeah. a participant in the circus and the coordinator yeah. for the entire circus would make more sense to me. Yeah. You know, circular yarn carnival. She, she, um, with the fire thing you guys saw a little while ago, um, this summer she coordinated uh, a whole bunch of other fire people for an exhibition. Ooh. How, how many people were in that exhibition? Um, about like five. It wasn't like a whole bunch, but because it was farther up in New Hampshire, so it was hard well, to get them. Well, give me contact. You know what? When I do one of my other events that I have, I'll have them on con contact and we'll put on that. I my event, I don't call them psychic event. I, I take the word psychic out because I think that Mary and I talked about. This. Mm -hmm. I think the word psychic scares people away. Yeah, I prefer to call it like a spirit. That's why I call it. You know, by the way, folks, uh, uh, on Facebook is spiritual reading by Reverend Norm. And just to let you know, folks, I did go to Bible school. Okay, I could probably, and I'm not one of the online. Uh, go online and I'm a reverend I go online like some people that I know and they call themselves a PhD doctor and all that you know because they got it online I went uh, to a New Creature Fellowship I went to their Bible school and which oh, one? New Creature Fellowship in Laconia okay oh believe me I was a holy roller like there was no tomorrow I bet you were <laughs> and one time they told me I was being slain in the spirit, so I fell down and I kidded out my body. Shook. Then when it was all over, I a little bit of talking in tongues, oh, just yeah. just for good education. Yeah, 
I still talk in spirit. Uh -huh. Okay. And then I went, I went in there. My last time I ever went to it, I went in there. I was quite intoxicated. Oh my God. And I walked in. Let me tell you what I think about you people. And they said to me, oh, Brother, you're being slain in the spirit. I go, I won't use the letter I want. I go, F no. I said, You people are deceivers. You lied to me. You lied about all these different things. You told me that God provide, but because of you and I believe supporting my own, I lost everything I own. But you know what? Everyone you have a great life. And then they had me stand in front of a whole bunch of people, a hundred things and two say, God has healed me from being gay. And when I said that, all these people walked away, they wouldn't talk to me, they wouldn't do anything. And if that's being a Christian, I don't want any part of them. Because I love who I am today. You know? Don't you? Yeah. Absolutely. How about you? No, you don't. Know, you got to learn. Yeah, I have, I have a little bit more to do, but I'm getting there. Just remember every day, you're a winner. You're beautiful. You have a great heart. Your dog loves you. I love him so much. Your dog loves you more than he does the other people. Yeah, that would be true. He's and jealous just... of it, too. <laughs> He's... Give me another card. You have another career opportunity coming, George. I'm going to do another one on you afterwards. What's that? You got another career opportunity coming to you. And it kind of evolved. Can you travel? I can travel a little bit uh, because of my health, not as much as I used to. But this one's going to be working with you. You're going to be traveling. And I don't see you going abroad. You're better off than here. <clears throat> but I, I know I'm not going to say it's going to be a lot of traveling, but you're going to be doing a lot of traveling. You're going to be like directing a lot of jobs. Okay, because now it's time for you to stop being lazy and stop using your intelligence. Okay. You understand what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Abundance. Okay. Right? Okay. What, what do you think that means? Um, I have a lot of something going on. You have a lot of great things. You've you got to learn how to balance the negative energy with the positive energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. you got to learn to say, okay. This, you're going to be teaching, a lot of it's going to come in your dreams. So you're going to be able to learn to say, oh, was this dream real? Because if it's a real dream and it's meant to happen, it will come back tenfold. If it's not meant to happen, it's not going to come back. Mm -hmm. You can control your dreams. Just like you can control your boyfriend. You're always going to be the controller. You're going to let them think that, they, that they're doing that. You have a couple of shotguns, don't you? You know, what I, want, I don't see you. I really don't are you, see are you. Are you trying to <clears throat> get the future Democrats to come to my house to take? Yes, I am. I'll stand here with you. How's that? Sounds great. Well, come I, stand right on the porch with me and help me protect my guns. And I'll have my great sign there. <laughs> you know, I, that's one thing that I don't understand. Why do people have to think it's okay to destroy other people's signs? Uh, political signs yeah. or yeah political. well actually it's, it's illegal um, yeah. I actually know some friends of mine who are politicians who keep having their uh, signs destroyed who put yeah, up too. cameras to actually capture the people who are doing that turning them over to the attorney general's office and having them prosecuted what is, I mean what is it the if you don't want, I know. You know, if you don't like them I, I, I had a couple of Trump signs that somebody said it and he said they needed more than I did you mm -hmm. know and that's okay yeah, you know, but if you feel that you you know you don't have Mary and I don't agree politically, Mary and I do not agree, do we? Yeah, it's you know? time, but well, it's okay. Friends. But the one thing that anybody want any readings on there? What? No. Well, okay. But the one thing that you and I will, I will, I will, you do, I don't have to agree with you, mm -hmm. but I'll say it. I will say that for your right to disagree with me or anybody's right to disagree with each other. As long as you don't hit my beautiful body, my beautiful face, I'll be all set. But I will, anybody, if you want disagree with it, that's okay. But I will stand up for your constitutional right, and I know you will. Absolutely. To agree with them. And, and if I don't agree with them, because it is your right to be that way, mm -hmm. you know. I also will tell you that, now remember, we have that challenge. Yeah. I want to see a report card when, you, when you're in the sophomore year in high school. I'm a freshman. A freshman? Okay, at the end of the year, I want to see that. Then I'll give you the right to do tarot cards. All right. Can you tell me more about Coco? Because I love him so much, and I'm so worried that he's, like, not happy. He's very happy. Okay. 
He he doesn't like being left alone. Yeah, today. Who's yelling at him? Um, I well, we all kind of do, but I, I like yell his name. No, no, no. Who's yelling at him in a real loud voice? Probably my sister. I want to say I've heard her do that. It shakes it, it, it shakes the dog up. Yeah. The dog is a very sensitive dog. Did you rescue this dog? Yeah. yeah. And he was abused before you got him. Okay. So if you're going to you sculpt him, do it gently. Mm -hmm. He was hit by a newspaper. That would make sense. By it, it appears like it would be by an older gentleman because if anyone who's an older gentleman shows up at our house, um, gray hair and a beard, um, he is. Um, I don't lose it. Yeah, he's furious. Kind of and he's a pit, uh, a pit bull. See, people had that misunderstanding about pit bulls. I love them so much. They're so cute. My son, she can tell you, my son had a pit bull, Brittany Spaniel. And she was sitting there eating. We, uh, oh, my God. She was sitting there eating. What's she was that? such a sweet, oh, yeah. on some kind of kebab. Yeah, kebab, steak kebab. On a stool. Just like that, he would always took it right out of her hand. He thought it was good for him and not her. <laughs> my son literally had a rescue. But... You could not bring, uh, the only one that could bring a dog to his house, because my dog, the dog had passed away, was my, I could bring my dog there. But any other dog, no. I love people. It would sit on my lap. Didn't it sit on your lap? Yeah, he did, yeah. And, beautiful, uh, beautiful yeah. dog. All animals wow. are going to be, be, treat you with friendship. If you treat them with respect, they're going to treat you with respect. By the way, you're getting another dog. I am. <laughs> Don't look at me like that, because you're going to give in. Always do. And it's going to be a dog that's um, like a mate for you that's been abused. And your Coco here is going to be very protective of that dog. So is Coco going to be okay with other dogs? Oh, absolutely, with that dog. With but that you're going to have to train that dog to be okay with it. Yeah. Because they know. They know. It's like when my chicky uh, passed away, my cat would lay on top of the table. Uh, when my dog was in the office, my cat would literally lay on top of the table to be with him. Wow. Nice yeah, what a beautiful cat. Yeah. Yeah. His name is Big Boy. Oh my God, spoiled. He's the boss. Pets always are spoiled. I don't well, know what it Scott is. Scott has his favorite chair, but when Big Boy comes in, Scott has to get up, either sit on the floor mm -hmm. or sit in a different chair. He sits, lays here, and just. But isn't that what they're supposed to do? Yeah. I was supposed, and I, because I know my other cat, Killer was his name, uh, sent it to us. See, I believe that spirits send our animals to us. I really do. Okay. Coco was made for me. You have a, uh, the, what, do you, what do you always have a miscarriage? They can actually get the baby up there that, that, was, uh, that went through a miscarriage. Or an abortion. I think she did. Yeah. Well, that's with you protecting you. Really? You have a, one thing I want you to understand. You have a lot of spiritual guides and animals and angels that are protecting you. Even though his mother, your mother passed, right? Think that you're 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 a loony tooty by doing that fire stuff because she surely would never understand that. Was your mother real passion? Oh yeah. Okay. She never understood what you were doing. You know. And she doesn't. But she understands that she respects you as a parent, giving her the right to do it. She would have done it anyways, had you not given her the, uh, her. I would have. Yeah, oh, she yeah. would have. You know it. I know it. And I know it. You're better mm -hmm. off to give her that. That. Uh, I think it's better that we actually talk and understand each other. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I encourage her to say, uh, basically, to be honest and upfront. Yeah. Um, on anything because that's way better than anything else. It, it only makes it matters worse. People can disagree with me but when I knew that my son had spoken pot at 15 or whatever. You know what? I did it know it and have to do it behind my back and get into trouble over it. Mm -hmm. You know? And the same with anything you do in life, come to me. Uh -huh. Be open minded about it. Mm -hmm. you know? And. Uh, I, I'm a firm believer that the more open-minded you are with your children, I'm not going to tell them to sit there and drink a beer with them. I'm not going to tell you to sit there and smoke a joint. I mean, they're well old enough now, so you can't really have to do that. Um, no, do I think that is wrong? Yes. I actually had a friend of mine many, many years ago, and it's so long ago I can mention it because he's dead, <laughs> and his son has grown up and, you know, pretty old at this point. Um, but his son would go out with his friends, 
and smoke marijuana on the street, trying to hide it from dad. Dad would just smoke it in the basement. <laughs> so mom just like, look, okay, you need to talk to your dad. And he's scared to death. And then he goes and talks to his dad, and his dad is like, hey, sit down, right? But it doesn't make sense to go, uh, it didn't then make sense it to go and smoke it in the street. They got, uh, one time I went smoking, and my son walked in, and I, oh, no, you know. And, you know, we went, I threw the hat, and like, and you're going to drink a beer, and whatever. Do, like in California, and it used to be, I don't know if the saw is still there or not, but in California, you can actually, the kid can actually get drunk on your property. And under the age, as long as you don't go out on the sidewalk. Really? Mm -hmm. And you can call a police officer, every name in the book, as long as you don't go out on, once you get off that property, all hell let loose. <coughs> now that's what I was in California. Now it's still, I'm sure, because California is more lean than ever. Oh, I can tell you something exciting. I haven't seen my niece and nephew in over 60 years, okay? And my niece called me from California two weeks ago. And now I have a beautiful contact with my, ne my one of my nephews. Oh, that's and one wonderful. Of my other nieces. Have you actually talked to them video yet? Like yeah. over Facebook? Yeah. Isn't that the most yeah, that's amazing thing? I found thing? them on Facebook. Uh huh. You know? And I, at first I lied about it because, you know what, I'm pretty, well, I didn't know how they would accept because my brothers wouldn't accept the way my lifestyle and I didn't want them to start. And, I, and, you know, I'm a comfortable wife and I didn't want that to be upset. Now we get along great. My nephew looks just like me. I said, you poor kid. I said, are you a womanizer? He said, well, yeah. I go, well, I'm not. <laughs> but, you know. Do you I just call have... yourself an Iser? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. asterisk Iser, right? right yeah. and then, like... but, you know, and, and the cool part, I, mean, I actually had some nieces and nephews that won't talk to me. Mm -hmm. I have one that my brother-in-law, uh, before he passes, why don't you go out with women? I because I don't want them. And he refused to talk to me. I said, okay, have a good life. I walked out. And his daughter and her husband refused to talk to me because of my life. And you know what? That's okay. I have people. I'm not going to judge me. I have people who used to work for me that, you know, um, have not spoken to me since the Democrat sent out that mailer that we talked about on your show one time. Yeah. Like, ridiculous? literally will not speak to me, will walk across the street to avoid me. And I'm like, I don't get it. Like, I don't care. You don't like don't care. you don't like my lifestyle. That's fine, but you know, grow up, right? I, I don't judge yours. Why should you judge mine? Yeah. Who are we to judge each other? Mm -hmm. We should accept each other based on who we are and understand that each of us is different. Right. I don't have to agree yeah. with a lot of the things that are going on. Like I don't agree with body changing parts and stuff because, but that's not up to me to judge. You, well, you have to decide whether or not you want to change any body parts. But, right. you know, if somebody else does, as that, long as they're, they're paying for it. it. Yeah, I don't like the government paying for it. Right. And that's what I don't like. that's a guy that's in prison. And we have to pay for him to become a female. That's I'm wrong. sorry. I don't agree yeah. with that. Does, so does he actually get to move to the <laughs> female prison? They don't know. They're going to isolate. He's isolated right now. Right. But you see the problem there, yeah. right? Yeah. But a lot of the, the one of the biggest concerns I had now when, and I'm not, you know, and they're great people, but it's their choices, you know. I yeah. don't have to agree with it. And I don't, uh -huh. you know, because according to the Bible, if you follow the Bible, God made you in his image. He did not make you to change your gender or whatever, but if you feel comfortable with it, I know a lot of people that have changed. But the problem is, if you start taking the medication for it, then you're going to go through a lot of, because the rest of your life you're going to home. I mean, don't you ever think about Jason. You're too beautiful. Oh, no, I won't. Okay. <laughs> Besides that, your, your dad might turn you on his knee and give me a spanking. Get right, girl! <laughs> would, would never... You need a spanking. Would never... Ha nope. Actually, we had this conversation the other day. We did. Um, <laughs> he said I <laughs> we, we were talking... Oh, my God. And Go he ahead. Was like, Go ahead. He was like... I, when I was a kid, like, I got the belt, you know, they would line the kids up, oldest to youngest, and he was like, I don't believe you've ever gotten the belt unless it was consensual and you wanted it. <laughs> I was honest. He was honest, and you know like, what? She didn't get it from me. If she got a belt, she got it from someone else in a consensual exchange. With me, when I, I can remember 
which probably sounds really odd, but you know me, no, so it's not. Yeah. When I, uh, I can remember growing up, when I, I know what it's like to be beaten as a child. Uh -huh. When my father would tip his hat and go out and cut a branch, uh -huh. whether I did something wrong or not. Uh -huh. But you know what? It was my way of getting attention. Mm -hmm. I never saw him around. I grew up by myself, and that's okay. And I can remember one time, my, my own set said I'd done something wrong. And I was going to, and I can remember getting ready to use the belt to spank him. And I said, I can remember the same one, I've got to do it one more time so that you'll understand. And all I said, what the hell am I doing? I'm, I'm following my dad. And I never did it again. Mm -hmm. I've, never, I've never hit one of my children once. My, 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 my son was, or my oldest stepson, I sent him to his room and doing something. I look out the window, he's been sending him up a radio, sending him up a Coke. And a, so I said, uh, oh, thank you for the Coke. And thank you for the radio. You know, or my, <coughs> and, or my son, my, when I put my own son in the room, Dad, can I come out now? Dad, I promise I'll be good. You know, I mean. That was me when I was yeah. younger. And I can remember one time you know, play with a stove, like, you know, like two or three years old, and I went like that to him. It hurt me more than it hurt him, <laughs> you know? And my biggest problem with my own son was I would never let my ex-wife correct him. Uh -huh. And I probably should have, but that was mine. Because she had her other five children, and that's my son with mine. And I would do the, because he'd call me up at work, Mommy won't let me do this, and then, and of course, you know. And uh, he used to get a pretty good size allowance when he was 11 years, until he was 11 years old, $100 a week. I wish I could have an allowance of $100 a week. I wish Hello. I could have an allowance of $100 a week. You know, and you know what he said to me when I told him I couldn't do it anymore? Well, thank you. Excellent. You know, he said, thank you. Because yeah, there again, that's what I realized. I would try to buy. We're it. lucky if we got license week. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, in, in terms of discipline, uh, when with in terms of my kids or when we have other other <laughs> kids over who are badly behaving, yeah. I uh, ended up seeing a YouTube video a number of years ago, where there was this kid who was made to face the wall. Okay, and he was told that when he stopped screaming and wanted to be civilized, he could get off the wall. But if he was just going to continue, then he could scream at the wall all he wanted to, but no one was going to pay attention. And that is my mentality 100%. Okay, You're not going to scream and try to get attention from everyone else. Okay, if you want to misbehave, that's fine. You can yell and scream all you want to, but when you want to be civilized, Let's have a discussion. Yep. And you know what? That works all the way down to four-year-olds. Yeah. You know, I can remember reading the latest survey because I've been reading really child psychology as well. And um, I can remember now, and then, then the latest thing is, if your children are inappropriately behaving, send them to the bathroom. And I'm going, no. If you send and put a child in the bathroom, they're not going to go and be party or They're not going to go to the bathroom because they, they, they're being punished. Or I don't like it. Well, I'm going to give you a choice. Either continue on with behavior or stop what you're doing. What's a child going to do? He's going to continue on the behavior, you know? And um, I, I have a problem with that, you know. What, you know, I, I, I like doing the ABC. Have you heard of the ABC? I the have. Antecedent, the antecedent, what, what precipitated the, the B, the behavior, and what was the consequence. Okay. Okay. That's nice. So what, and what it is, and uh, my friend Bill, Dr. Bill Conley was a very close friend of mine, okay? Um, I learned a lot from him. Mm -hmm. And what it is, the antecedent is, what, what were you doing, and what was going on with your child, like her having a baby temper tantrum, mm -hmm. and what was her behavior? Well, she threw things around, what was her consequence? Like you just, I like it, like you just said, you let her throw things, or you let her stand in the corner and scream for the, for the consequence and until she got tired of screaming. And I found that over, over time, it was much shorter, because yes. they recognized yeah. the the problem was you cannot be part of a community when you're misbehaving, as opposed to, um, you know, uh, you hit them with a belt, mm -hmm. right? That, that's painful. It is equally painful to be excluded from a community. And I, I, I went in and I actually grabbed a parent. Okay, I didn't get my start, whatever. Because he had his child on her knee, and the son on their knee, with mar uh, uh, sitting on marbles for a half hour. 
And I walked out of him and I said, if you're smart, because I had a few martini, you know. Mm -hmm. I, and then I became a man, you know. But if you're smart, you will get them up off their knees and you will apologize. I, I said, the child only three years old, I didn't want to that, he doesn't know what he did wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, and the other one, you know, well, they picked on my girlfriend's son. I said, your girlfriend's son is 12 years old. Did he get punished? Well, no. You know. You know, and I said, I will put you in the corner of your knees. And keep a little notebook. And this notebook <clears throat> is about when I get upset. And it's about how I felt just before I got upset. What were my physical reactions That's to getting idea. upset? so that you can recognize and de-escalate, right? So that you can be self-aware. The more self-aware you are, the more calm you can be in any situation because you know that these are your triggers and don't be triggered. That's the ABC. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. I'm gonna have you two swap over. Then we're gonna, I'm gonna watch you again and we'll do one. And you're as blind as me. <clears throat> I look like, I'm not sure. Looks like, oh, I got my glasses here. <laughs> 527. Yeah. 537? 27. Oh, already? Oh. Um, you want these or these? You choose. No, you choose. You're, I'm reading you. I only think that you're reading the person being read to you. Those are, by the way, from Australia. I saw they have pretty amazing pictures on them when you were turning them over for her. I like the abundance card was this lady in a in a really like sweepy dress. And I was like, yeah. wow, that's like quite nice. There is another woman that's got out to try to destroy you and your wife. There is? Mm -hmm. Excellent. And I, I'm really serious when I say that because we've got to be really careful not with her. Uh-huh. Because she's a very, very vicious lady. You know? We all are. And, well, no, 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 but the thing that she's going to say is that uh, she's, gonna, she's one of these people that does not know how to tell the truth. And I will also tell you that your two children are going to flip out on her. And she, because, you know, the one thing about you is when you get into tight into a corner, you don't lie, you tell the truth. I do tell the truth. Is this a future girlfriend? Is this a future girlfriend? No, it's someone who wants to be. Oh, okay. I don't even know of anybody. I'll probably who figure it out before he does. Yeah, I don't oh, know yeah. of anyone who wants to be, but my wife says I have no game anyway. No. She says I miss um, most of the clues. Um, I bet you've never seen anyone shuffle these this way, have you? I, was, I think that's cool. Right? But what like this that. does is this is a completely random mix because I don't know anything. The deck has no preconception. Did you know that every card deck statistically ever dealt, okay, has is unique to that one instance? Right. Because there are so many combinations, okay, if you ever get the same set, then uh, it's statistically in impossible, yeah, highly improbable. And... Like, it is more improbable than the number of atoms in the universe. That's incredible. Oh, yeah. I like that. All my cards, like from here, these are from the Bahamas. And those were from Austra New Jersey and Australia. Uh huh. These the people, they own property those in the Bahamas. Those are so pretty. They've always sold uh, six pieces of property for $2 million a piece. Wow. They bought it for 100000 Life is good when you yeah. pull that one off. And this one here, they own a beautiful, I love them dearly. I, every time I have a birthday party with them, then we have fireworks. How many people have fireworks for their birthday to celebrate? I have no idea. You know, this is why I wake up, in fact, I always wake up, I say, what if my bubble going to burst? You know what I mean? Because I, you know, from where I've been to where I am now, you know, I love, but I also know I had to go that path to be where I am. And I do not look down on anybody. Mm -hmm. And if I ever do, I will be so a bit. Do I, do I have to associate with them? Absolutely not. But can I pray for them? Can I shake their hand? And I go, well, I carry these 
hit white, he and white, you know, kind of they touch me, you know, ooh, you know. But then I also, I have this lady, she's from El Salvador, a lot of pieces, okay? And she brings over these big bags. Oh, I got some salads and stuff for you. Bag of salad and sandwiches that she gets from where she works instead of throwing them out. So I give them to people. If I'm not going to eat them, why not? You know, I'm sure. giving people. Yeah, absolutely. They're what I'm supposed to be doing. Like yeah. I had two turkeys I gave away. And I'm not looking for a pat on the back. You know, I'll do my own. But if we are selfish and don't give that to other people, shame on us. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me three cards. Now, your daughter that's looking to get that engagement ring, um, I do see it coming very quickly, but the problem I had, she can't keep trying to control him. Uh -huh. Otherwise, she, he's going to take a walk. He's a that's nice guy. That's what I've guy. been told by his friends. He's smart, he's a nice guy, but she's got to let loose. Anyway, she's very much like her mother, control, control. Now, let's see. Oh, that's pretty. Vulnerability. Oh, that's pretty. Wow. You, you, oh, is that pretty? Yeah, you can be very vulnerable to cute women. <laughs> but no, you can be, actually, you can be very, until they prove, that, 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 until they prove you wrong, you can be very vulnerable to other people's stories. Mm -hmm. But you're learning how to have a pretty good change of character. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's where the vulnerability could, you're too trusting at times, like Lindell mm -hmm. and other people, you know. Now you're having to learn that you can't be as trusting uh, people. The only one you can trust is your wife. Okay. You don't even trust yourself. Nope. You have to learn how, then you have to learn how to trust you, okay. Mm -hmm. Because the one thing about you, you're very open, you're very honest with mm -hmm. people, okay. And I actually see you going back to school and taking up some more courses online or whatever because I can see you becoming a teacher, okay? No matter what you do, your children and your wife will always support you, okay? And I'm not sure if you always deserve that support, you know. Right, It has to be all up to you, of course, you mm -hmm. know. Well, now, one thing about you is that um, I do see you getting back into politics, but not so much in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. I see you going like, I don't know whether it's in Michigan or Wisconsin, but I do see you moving, you and your whole family moving out of the state of New Hampshire. What do you think? Mm, don't know. Okay. Are you ready for the move? No. You will know when I tell you, well, believe me, you will know. Your father will let you know in an uncertain terms. Yeah, I know. Thinking I'm waiting, I'm waiting for some, to be honest, I'm waiting for somebody to just say, look, this is a conservative um, legislative district somewhere in the country, we would like a stand-up Republican to show up and put together a good fight. For You're going to get a message saying that. And I've gotten I've gotten some like calls like that already. So if the right now, opportunity, you're gonna, can, gonna, or, now, now, first I see you. You're going to have to act independent, but yet have that conservative ideas. Okay, and like there's something about Wisconsin very strong. Okay, and there's something about that you're gonna be, and that's gonna be where there's a lot of like a land property. You own your own house. Uh, we do. Yeah, okay. Although out in Wisconsin, yeah, I could own probably 200 acres yeah. for you know, um, yeah. and she, it would be beautiful. Yeah. Like oh, you also have a leaky roof. I do. Check by your eaves. Okay. On the back side. Okay. okay. Fire what? The leaky, a leaky roof on the back side of the house. Mm -hmm. you, burn by, you burn wood? Uh, we actually burn wood for entertainment because I like the smell of it. I like the Clean feel of chimney. it. What's that? Clean your chimney. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to have a smoke fire. Okay. And I've never been wrong on fires. Okay. Okay. I went. I, in fact, I met a couple of people through that because I, I could actually see smoke coming out of my shed or something out of your house. So it's up to you. Mm -hmm. And when I seen that come in reality, mm -hmm. you know, I met uh, two very good friends of mine that I went by their house and oh my God, there's smoke coming out of that window. Come find out. There was a, there was a wire there in the, near the circuit breaker, so it went kind of really were able to. One guy thought it was a joke. Guess what? His house is no longer. He told me I put a curse on him. I thought you had boundaries on my head. 
because the things that I tell people. Mm -hmm. And I say, you know what, if that makes you feel better, go for it, more power to you. And when you start learning to do tarot cards, don't be surprised that they you make some enemies with them. Because people do not always want to hear. They want to hear what they want to hear, not what they should be hearing. Right, Mary? Yes. I'll let you read it. Time to soar. Okay. To the picture of a pretty bird. Oh, is that pretty? What do you think that means? Um, it, I suspect it means time for a life change and an ability to advance whatever well, it is yeah, I'm uh, doing. Career-wide and political. Okay. I would also encourage you to study uh, holistic type healings. Because mm -hmm. I can see you really heal, doing a lot more self-healing of yourself and helping other people. Mm -hmm. You're a great salesman. Well, thank you. You can, you can tell somebody a story when it's straight face. As long as it's honest. You can tell a story when it's straight face. Mm -hmm. And convince them, but in the end you would tell them that it wasn't. You cannot be, I mean, you can tell somebody, oh, it's blue and snow flakes outside, but they're color blue, mm -hmm. okay? And you can do it with a straight face. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, you can also change it to be the truthful part of it, too, okay? <coughs> <coughs> One thing a lot of politicians don't like about you because you're up front and you're forward, mm -hmm. okay? And if you step on someone's toe, that's life. Absolutely. You know, and life isn't going to start right away. It's going to grow. Wow, what a beautiful boat. A journey. Yeah, what does this say? It oh says... Oh, I like that one. Time to soar. Okay, don't they go together? I think they do. I think they do. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. You're going on a whole new journey. Ooh, Your daughter's going to be following you wherever you go. You and your daughter have a lot of things in common when your other daughter and your wife have a lot of other things in common, okay? I'm the closest to my dad by far. I can tell him anything. You're going, oh, I don't, I, can I be brutally, brutally honest with you? Sure. You're going to be accused of doing something inappropriate with your other daughter. Not from her. And not from your wife. Not because there are some people that are gonna be very jealous. And there's some kind of counselor. Bring it. There's some kind of a counselor who's going to try to say that. I know the wine counselor, when, you, when a girl starts seeing a counselor because of depression, they automatically assume that the child yeah. has been molested or whatever. Like with my son, they automatically assume that I did something because I'm gay and all that, you know. And, you know, so just be prepared for some nasty thing. You got someone who's going to try to ruin you politically. Bring it. Yeah. You know, I have a, um, um, you know, I have friends, and I have enemies, and my enemies uh, don't understand me, and my friends are scared of me. That's Do you a good want thing. them to understand you? Oh. What do you mean? I, I don't want them to understand me. Ray Buckley will never understand me <laughs> until I am done with him, and I will never be no. done with him. No. That's a quote in case no. anyone's unclear. Yeah. Ray Buckley happens to be in charge of... The Democrats, Democrats in and Manchester and New Hampshire. Yeah. Ray, just for the record, I'm coming for you. Okay. I didn't say this, so, you know. But one thing about, I want, you know what I found interesting when Ray, you never see these leading politicians, uh, like a presidential candidate, so you never see with Ray Buckley. Mm hmm. What well, that's because of his, his discussions about The Hague. I mean, you guys want to actually um, No, I don't want see, to get into it, but. But I, I find it very interesting, like like uh, uh, Pocahontas or whatever that's uh -huh. called, or all them. Yeah. Um, I don't see them with Ray Buckley. Yeah, Ray Buckley needs to remain um, on presidential candidates, reasonably neutral, until after the primary and is you're over. You're not going to see him. And the one thing I know, see, no, I said nobody reasonably. liked him with Stephen Dalcourt. Can I believe that, you know, and all that. And sad that people have to destroy other people's lives, like he was mm -hmm. trying to do to you, okay? Mm -hmm. One of the things I also want to tell you is that when you do get, I actually make sure you're fighting very hard to become the state senate. Mm -hmm. Don't turn your back. Because uh -huh. they're going to give you with a 
pow, right in the back. Of I that, know they are. You know. But you enjoy that kind of a challenge. Absolutely. Wouldn't it be dull? Uh, well, it, it would. I mean, the, the reality for me is that if, if they're not attacking me, I'm not working hard enough. No. I, like, quite literally, I actually know that I, have, I don't have their attention and don't have their respect. There are people who they don't pay attention to at all. I'm not one of them. They are actually scared of what happens Hope if so. I get in there and start There's telling the like truth. That, are right. you still running for state rep? Yep. Mary's going to run for state. Congratulations. Yep. You know, yep. I, I know reason, I'm not going on is because I don't want to. Because I know I don't want. I'm tired of my spiritual life being attacked. It, mm -hmm. and the spirit says no. And when the spirit talks, I mm -hmm. uh, listen. I'll always have my vocal opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, but I know I'm not going to waste my time. You know, I don't have to agree with the Republican Party. I don't have to agree with the Democratic. I don't. Re I don't agree with. I don't agree with either one of them. One hundred percent. Yeah. And Ronald Reagan used to say, "If you're with us eighty percent, you're with us." Right. Oh, that's pretty. Symbiosis. Oh, that means you, you you connect with male Look and female. So we are all born with a female and male and and all our sexual partner right in here tells us how we wanna if we're gonna be male or a female. You were actually a female in your past life. Okay. That's why you're so hot for the women today <laughs> and you know. But well, actually you've always been a very open person. You've always been a person, even in your past life, that's always been politically minded, but in a different phrase. You actually you were a dictator at one time. And you are a dictator on Russia. Really? So this is why I, I have a feeling that Russia really interests you in the, the background. Of, and all this BS that's going on with the Russians and uh, all this. You already know firsthand that's a bunch of garbage. You I actually do. It, okay? I and actually that, went to Azerbaijan, mm -hmm. which is where um, a lot of the big fight, fighting went on and the toppling of mm -hmm. the Russian Republic. Yeah. And you also helped build the pyramids. Hmm. But your mind on how they're being built was well, completely brainwashed, so you'll never know. Okay. You got nobody knows how they were built. I've had people tell me that they would send me to a place in Arizona if I could tell them how the, how the pyramids were being built. It's not my part. It's not my job to do that. If the spirits and the angels want you to know how how uh, the pyramids are built, they'll tell you. Mm -hmm. I do know, but I'm not allowed to do it because it will take, and I'm not going to take it away from me. One thing about you also, uh, Emily, is that you also worked in the ancient Greeks. You were you were you were actually worked with a lot of uh, Greek people, and that you also took care of a lot of the Greek children. Okay. You've always been on the so-called wild side. I could never see you conforming to any other side. Yeah, me neither. I'm really fun. Yeah. Don't you enjoy life? Yeah. Don't you dare to think about hurting yourself again. Yes, I will know. Yes, sir. <laughs> and would you want me to tell you? Yeah. Okay. But I have to do it with her permission. Okay. Because you're too valuable. You're beautiful. You have the most caring heart on anybody your age. Don't let these people bully you. I know what it's like. I'm sure your dad knows his life. Kind of we're a different spectrum. We're in a different way. I don't really have any bullies, though. I have, then like, stop bullying yourself. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that one's a tough one. You got me we there. All do that one. You got me there. Okay. Are you beautiful? Yeah, I'm really pretty. Are you beautiful inside? Yeah. Are you beautiful inside? Yeah. That's a soft yes, wasn't it? <laughs> Can you look in the mirror and say that? Oh, pers no. I want you to. Okay. I want your dad, I want you, your mom, your sister, and your dog to all look in the mirror and say, you know what? I am beautiful inside. I am beautiful outside. I am beautiful out inside. And I like me for who I am. You're right. Not I like I that, am. Mom. Okay. And I want you to, are you a winner? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, Except honorable? at chess with my dad, then I never win. That's not true. He, he just lets you think you don't win. 
And he's a dad, remember this. He's not going to get into you that easy. But he loved debating with you. I think yeah. our best debate was on, um, what was it? It was immigration. I'm an old fashioned. I think you and I have a lot of good ideas on that, Joy. Sometime I'm going to have you come to my house and we'll go on Facebook and we'll talk about our ideas. There you go. And I don't want to say one here, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I have a. I have a Mary's been to my office. Yeah, Mary's. it's good. I like it. It goes Facebook like that. Right. Uh, my, my daughter in law painted I mean, it all over the beautiful lavender walls. Mm. And I have, uh, I'm going to be putting a new carpeting. But it's in my apartment where I live. But I have, and I'll, I'll let you know if you want to come in. I might sit on you a lot, but that's okay. I won't tell anybody. It'll be on Facebook. Everyone will know. Well, yeah, that's okay. they will. I'm not bashful. I know you're not. I'm not modest at all. <laughs> what? Like I am? Yeah. When I, you know what's funny? When I was growing up as a child, I used to hide behind the refrigerator because my father would bring all these people over and I would literally hide behind the refrigerator because I was a child that they considered me uh, feeble-minded back in them days. Um, you name it, I was going to get out of hair lip and I had all that stuff. So I was always made fun of so I was taught how to heal myself. And then, you know, and then school, I was rejected, and so, you know what, and that's, I needed all that to be where I am today. Mm -hmm. Were you popular in school? No. You were a weird old kid, right? Kid? Oh, I was way out on the fringe. Wasn't it fun? Oh, yeah. I ha actually had this great experience because I switched schools when I was a junior in high school. I switched so that my senior year I was in Pelham, New Hampshire, and the, um, one of my teachers in the high school I was going from gave me the greatest lesson in the world. He said, tomorrow, or you know, in a couple days, you're gonna start at a new school. And you can be anyone you wanna be, choose wisely. Because we, when you show up in a new situation, you get to choose. Well, that's actually true all the way through life. Every time you meet new people, every time you get into a new situation, every time you embrace yep. a new job, whatever it is, you get to pick who you're going to be. Choose wisely. You know, and that's true. You know, I was never accepted in high school or elementary school or even college. I was always been a loner. And even when I was in nursing, you know, you know what? I don't care. Exactly. When I get into, I mean, I realize that in my drinking days and all that, the only reason people like me was because I had the gift that I have and I could tell them things. And when I'm becoming a boy, I, I was never accepted in that so-called boiling kitchen. But I don't care anymore. I have a great friend. You're my great friend. Emily is a great friend that I'll know if she's not doing good in school. <laughs> Your wife and I are good friends. Right? Absolutely. You know? And Mary and I are great friends. And we don't have to agree on everything. No, we don't. And that's a good part yeah. of it. You know? And uh, her cats love me. But I had oh, to bribe them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does. He bribes my cat. I had to buy a uh, yep. warm uh, roasted chicken. You were saying rotisserie chicken from Market Basket. Yeah, that's when going there and yeah. get one for them. Uh -huh. Otherwise, they're going to yell at me. That. I tell them that. I said, your uncles are buying you a chicken, and my, especially my crystal baby. She goes, hum you, hum. And she gets all, and she'll pick her paws up like this, you and know? And they know. Like she's yeah. dancing. And I'll say, well, that chicken make you feel better? And then she'll put her paws down. But when she wants something, she'll put one paw up. I, oh, and I'll kiss her little paw. And I'll, oh, here's some chicken that'll make you feel. She'll put that one down. Then she'll pick up the other one. And oh, that one hurts you too. And I'll give another piece of chicken. She actually yeah. watches my show. She does, my crystal. That's uh -huh. so cute. My dog, when before, she, before she crossed, what, about two months ago now, when, it used to, when Scott went, wants to come into the studio, when literally make Scott go outside with her and wait for me to come home. Mm -hmm. My last really good vision of her, excuse me if I get emotional, I came home from doing my show. That's a sad thing. And she sat there waiting for me. She was the sweetest little chihuahua you wanted to meet. Oh, I wanted adorable. to see her. Well, next, well, Scott found him next morning. She crossed over. Oh, I'm crying. Yeah. One, uh, one thing that it's people beautiful. need to understand, too, is um, she'll always be, she makes me walk now, go outside and walk. Go up and down the, and like animals, they don't like have people around them when they're crossing over. Most of them cross by themselves. I mean, it's okay. Same way with 
like your mom, your dad, or family member. I don't want anybody around me when I cross. Because a lot of times, what, yeah, they, do, they don't do it to be mean, but they do it to be with them to say goodbye. But a lot of the times, if you will notice it's spiritual, that the, body, the spirits will leave that body when people are not around. I had a very good friend of ours uh, uh, that went with Scott and I, and I was down at the funeral home making arrangements when I come home, he had crossed. You know? And then I had another friend that uh, I got up in the morning and he had crossed. Most, I truly believe this, that most people that want to cross, they want to cross by themselves. Because that way there's no destruction, there's no interruption, there's nothing. You know? How much more time we got? It's 5.52. I got 10 minutes up. Okay. Then a five minutes there, dude. I mean, Brandon, I'm sorry. <coughs> but, you know, do you feel that? How do you feel about that? I think you're probably right. You want people around you? I don't know, but I want them to absolutely celebrate. You oh, know, me too. Uh, you know, it's like have a party, um, crack some champagne, and say, you know what? It was an adventure. That's what he signed up for. Now, you know, and you know, that's like I want to. If they drink a beer, drink a beer. If you smoke a joint, smoke a joint. Like you just said, you know. And I don't. Oh, I don't want a funeral because then. Oh, I just love that man. He was such a good man. And I all want that. a party. Yeah, but don't come. You couldn't see me when I was alive. Don't come to me. When you, you know. Oh, we just love him and blah blah blah. Cause you know what? This, oh. You know, go go comfort my family. Yeah. Right. Go comfort my friends. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, you know, I've done it. Like you know, you, you have a you have a cycle. You're here. And you know it's over. Yeah. When I when I when someone in my household crosses over, like when my friend Jerry did and my friend Bob, I immediately take everything out of the house that belongs to them. Mm -hmm. I do not hold on to anything because you know. And I'll tell you, I, you look confused there, Emily, and I'll tell you why. Okay, because I have them here. Mm -hmm. I still have their pictures, mm -hmm. but a lot of the other things I just throw away mm -hmm. because that's all material. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to mourn. I mourn in my own way. I mourn because, but I also know that um, they will always be with me. My beautiful dog, you know, I've had many animals like you have and they're all with it. But I'm also knowing like, when my dad died, I went to the funeral and I cried and cry all that stuff. But, and I said, what did I cry for? I didn't even know him. Mm -hmm. I actually spent a month with my dad as he was, um, uh, getting to end of life, he had some, uh, he got a, caught a bacterial blood infection. And I spent about a month at the hospital because of my job, I could do that. And I talked to a friend of mine who's a writer. And she said to me, You should write about it. So after he died, I actually wrote a book. And the book is called We Are Our Children's Baggage Pack Lightly. And it was reflections on. You know, the responsibility of parents and the responsibility of children to um, understand the preconceptions that they get from their parents, that they inherit, and to understand their parents weren't perfect. Mm. They didn't have the ability. And, you know, just love them anyway. You know, I had one woman that came through about my dad, and I'm so grateful. He said that I don't need forgiveness. You know, me, referring to me, I don't that he asked me to forgive him, and I did a long time ago. And then I also found out, thank you, I also found out that my uh, grandfather is the one who gave me the gift that what I have now, mm -hmm. you know? Every one of us have psychic, if you want to call it, or spiritual ability. Yours is in writing, and yours is in political, yours is like what you're doing, being aroused about. And Mary is one who has her own opinion, and she sees a lot of things. And we all, and some are artists, so whatever we do is our own psychic energy. Okay, a writer. What do you do that you th that uh, that's different from others, Mary? I guess I'm more like a loner, and if I decide to do something, I'll do it. Uh, some people say, "No, don't do it," but I'll do it anyway. That's me. Yeah. And if they tell any of us here that we can't do it, I'll do it. I'm going to do it. The only thing I can't do is drive a nail on straight. <laughs> I don't care how hard and I women. try. Huh? And women. And women. Ooh. Ooh. 
<laughs> but I, I can, thought that was a straight joke. I, I, <laughs> no, but I can't. I can't drive the nail in straight. You know, I got fired for the job because I got more pain on me than I did in the wall. Uh -huh. I am not carpet training. I was doing a siding, helping people do a siding. They had to get a fire engine to bring me down, you know. And I said, well, I'm not ruining my nails. You know? But mm -hmm. what I do here, a lot of people, you know, wouldn't it be bored if we all did the same thing? Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, I want to thank both of you for coming on. Come back on again. Absolutely. You want to come on again? Sure. All right. And I'll know. <laughs> Mary, you're going to come on? And sure. I, I'll come on with you next week, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And folks, you know what? I've got a big event coming. They'll be coming more and more. Anybody interested? i got a lot of good people coming so on. If anybody wants to come on a week from this Thursday, that'll be my Christmas show. So please come on. I'm coming. I'll be doing a live show Monday the 23rd. Okay. And, you know. and you have a big event coming. Do you have a date for it yet? September 12th. September 12th next year. Next year, 2020. Okay. Yep. So, like, save the date. Yeah. If you want to be a reader or a vendor or if you want to... I'll tell you what. We'll auction George off. We'll okay. get him in. A, we'll get him in a <coughs> string there. We'll auction my mom. And, and do I have to wear like um, you know thong. that thong you were mm -hmm. talking about? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not so sure that I'll like fit well <laughs> in it. But if that's what it takes to raise money for charity, that, and it's pretty animals. Yeah, it is pretty animals. But it's an okay. animal charity. Right? Everybody, we'll see you all next week. Remember, every day you're the winner.